you know, you referred earlier to the the um, this article that you wrote about the world splitting in two. So if you could, can you explain to us who Halford McKinder is? And is Putin, you know, maybe borrowing part of his strategy? Yeah, I mean, he's, we don't know for certain whether he's, um, you know, sort of, if you like, a student of McKinder. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Halford McKinder was, uh, um, he was sort of, fairly um interesting individual uh, and he lived at uh, the, the turn of the um 19 and 20th centuries um he was a geographer um he came up with um uh, his geopolitical um story about asia being the uh, the pivot if if you like of the world uh, which he later called the world island and his original paper was in i think 1905 round about then 1903, 1905, something like that, uh, presented to the Royal Geographical Society in London. Uh, And interestingly, at that time, the prime minister was um, uh, Balfour. And um, Balfour was very interested in that pivot theory because he was concerned that Russia and Germany would get together. Um, As it, you know, as it would happened that did that didn't really happen because of the outbreak of world war one we had um uh, russia doing its own revolution but uh, certainly that was an interesting thing which was echoed by the ribbentrop pact uh, molotov ribbentrop pact uh, um, in the second world war uh, when the germans um uh, came to a, a, an understanding with the russians so um it's you know this is this is a, a very very interesting and important uh, concept that um, the world island, which basically is the bulk of Asia, rules the world, not the periphery. Now, the periphery for the last, I suppose, certainly since the uh, First World War, has been effectively ruling the world. Um, uh, uh, probably even for a bit longer. I mean, we started with Britain with this empire and then America um, really sort of took over from Britain, as it were. Uh, and uh, that is still the case today. But when you look at the relative sizes of the two camps, if I can put it that way, well, the first camp being us, NATO, um, which is America, UK, EU, um, Turkey's even in there, but that's sitting on the... <laughs> slightly on on the edge of this. Uh, You can also include um, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. Total population is roughly 20% of the world. Um, On the other hand, if you look at the Asian powers and all their associates, so we're talking about China, Russia, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the uh, Eurasian Economic Union, and uh, also BRICS, I calculated that that's 57% of the world's population, so more than twice our size. Now, this matters because um, Asia is rapidly industrializing. It's in an industrial revolution, which is really based mainly on communications, which China is basically funding. And so we've got um, the Silk Roads uh, going across uh, the whole of the Asian continent. You've got um, various spurs off it. You've got also the maritime Silk Roads uh, extending China's uh, influence um, outside Asia. So this is very much falling into the Makinda model. Um, And uh, we have made some huge mistakes in not really appreciating what is going on. And I think the most recent one has been over our policies towards Russia. And it is quite clear to me that Putin's objective it's not so much to gain all of Ukraine, um, though I'm sure if he just managed to walk in and take it over like that, he wouldn't have complained. Um, I think it's far more that he wants to secure his Western boundaries, his Western borders. And in order to do that, he needs to get America out of Europe, or at least to get Europe to downgrade America's influence over it. And the way it's doing that, I mean, we fell into the trap, which he set. Um, our response over Ukraine was basically to um, sanction Russia, which basically cut us off from uh, all the nasty oil, uh, gas, and coal, um, you know, sort of carboniferous energy, which we're doing away with anyway. Yeah. So that's, that's, so, yeah, that's fine. But <laughs> my goodness, look at what's happening to the prices. The other thing is that uh, Putin has turned around. I mean, I think he, 
pretty much worked all this out in advance because, you know, these Russians can be good chess players, let's face it. And he's no no slouch. Uh, and I think he uh, concluded it would be quite likely, in fact, he would be very surprised if the West didn't impose sanctions against Russia. I mean, we know from past actions that um, Russia has been sanctioned through uh, SWIFT, for example. That would be one thing. So what's his response? Well, it's quite simple. You want our oil, you want our gas, you paid rubles. Meanwhile, what he has been doing is he's been making life easy for the World Island cohort uh, by saying you can have oil, gas, coal, payable in your own currencies at a discount to global prices. And not only um, is he is he centering all this benefit, if you like, on the China, Russia, Shanghai Cooperation Organization cohort. But he's also got people like Saudi Arabia, who allegedly are thinking of joining BRICS. That doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me, but what does make sense is that from, from uh, Saudi Arabia's point of view and the UAE's point of view, their future markets are not us. We're trying to do away with carbon fuels. It is Asia. So they are in there. And it was interesting to see Lavrov, um, the uh, um, Putin's uh, foreign minister, briefing the Arab League in Cairo. He's making it absolutely clear to them what Russian policy on, on energy is. So, you know, I'm afraid we've, um, we've rather hung ourselves on, on this one. It's been a very, very stupid economic move. I mean, however you try and justify it politically, it's nuts, absolutely nuts. And the result is that this winter is going to be the hardest winter we have ever seen, both in terms of lack of fuel and also lack of, um, of food. So that's where we are. And um, meanwhile, OK, it's not going to be all roses for China. I mean, China has got its own property crisis. It's got that cyclical bank credit problem, if you like, in a way. Mm -hmm. um, it's destroying property ca capacity to try and uh, ensure there is market for the new. Um, and um, meanwhile, Russia is just going from strength to strength. I mean, I, I keep on reading in the Western press how doomed Russia is and how, you know, they're going to come to heel and um, how the economy is collapsing. And, um, you know, they come up with all these stories, but it is actually, um, it's, it's, it's completely made up. The Russians have a basic rate of income tax, flat rate, 13%. They have an economy which actually works pretty well. Um, I mean, I'm not talking about necessarily at government level, but certainly, um, you know, individuals uh, can do reasonably well. Their main problem is the one that the Americans had back in the 1920s. And that is, they've got, you know, sort of, if you like, mafias. Um, that, I think, is the problem. There's that lawlessness side, which means that ownership of property isn't protected as it should be by law. That is about the only real problem I can find with the Russian situation. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, the, 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 um, I mean, in the West, we sort of bang on about, you know, the lack of democracy and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, no, strong leaders, basically, um, uh, you know, there are two ways they can do it. They can either control their electorates through the democratic process or they subvert the democratic process. And he's, I'm afraid, Putin is a strong leader, um, much as we may vilify him. So that's how I see it. And of course, as far as the dollar's hegemony is concerned, this is designed to remove the dollar's hegemony from the Asian continent. Uh, and it's important to understand that the way the banking system works is on a correspondent banking basis. So uh, if someone in Ulaanbaatar, for example, wants to uh, import, I don't know, let's say, um, uh, a Mercedes car from Germany, then, uh, you know, the process is that they have to um, convert the euros into dollars before converting it into their own local currency. Now, the conversion into dollars means that the, the uh, transaction is reflected in the U.S. banking system. Do you really want it? I mean, here you are, you know, in, in, in this other half of the world trying to get rid of the dollar he dollar's hegemony. Do you really want to have your transactions reflected in that system? And this is apart from the cost of transactions. No, and this is why they're looking at producing a new currency for trade settlement. 